What's up everyone and welcome back to the comms channel. For today's video we'll be continuing our series on the TinySA Spectrum Analyzer and we'll be going over connecting it to a computer and using the app they have available on their website. This will be helpful for our next video in the series where we go over testing a mesh-tastic device since those signals are short bursts and are much easier to work with when the TinySA is connected to a computer. So join me in and let's get into it. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Now this works for both the basic and ultra versions of the Tiny SA. And to download the application, head on over to the Tiny SA website, and there we'll see a link for PC control where we can download the application. I'll include a link to this page in the video description below. On this page, there's a download for a Windows executable, which is what we'll cover in today's video. If you're on Linux or Mac, there's also a Python app at the bottom of the page, which will work for those operating systems. But looking at the screenshot, it's a bit different than the Windows application. So we'll stick with that one for now. And I may do a video on the Python version when I get a chance to test it out. So let's go ahead and download the Windows version using the link here ending in Windows. And on this next page, click on the link for tinysa-app.exe. Now this exe is the application itself and not an installer. So clicking on this will open up the application. This will also create some files in the same directory that you run it from. And now this is likely in your downloads folder. So what I like to do in these situations is place the files like this in its own folder. So let's go ahead and right click on the tinysa app and select cut using the scissors here. Now I like to create a folder named tools in my main user folder. Then we'll open that up and create a folder named tinysa inside the tools folder. Then go and open up that folder and we'll right click and paste in the tinysa app. Now we can go ahead and start the application. Now the first thing we need to do is figure out what COM port the TinySA is on and here's a quick and easy way to do that. On the top left here we have a drop down box that currently says none. If we click on that drop down box we'll see a list of COM ports available. Take note of what COM ports are currently showing up if any and in my case here we have 45, 13, and 12. Now that we know that, we can go ahead and plug in the TinySA to the computer, power it on, and we should see a new COM port show up, which is COM port 33 in my case. So now just click on the new COM port to select it, and the default baud rate is to the right of that and is 115-200, which is fine and can be left alone. All we need to do now is click on the button to the left that says disconnected, which should then connect the TinySA and it'll show connected. Now let's go over what we can do in the app. Now, unfortunately, the app doesn't have the option to do all of the same measurements that you can on the device itself, things like harmonics for checking if the radio is clean, for example. But what we can do in cases like that is control the device itself from the computer by clicking on this button on the top left menu bar here with the camera. And what this will do is capture the screen of the device and by default, it'll just show a screenshot of what's being shown on the device's screen at the time of opening up the screen capture window. But what we can do is click on the auto refresh toggle switch and get a live view of the screen. This also allows you to click on the screen and control the device as if it was in your hands. And there's also a save button if you want to save a screen capture to a file. So that's that part of the app and we can go and close that and take a look at the rest. Now if the screen refresh is still on, it'll just pop back up when you close it. So make sure you turn off the toggle switch for the screen refresh before closing it out. So this first button on top with the gear cog is a settings button. And if we open that, we can change various things like the colors with this GUI style drop down box. Now I like dark colored windows, so I'll change mine to carbon. And there's also other various display items like the font and font size of the graph that can be changed to fit your needs as well. Now the next thing in the settings window to check out is this frequency bands. And if we look at the graph, we have these gray bars on it, and these are references to the bands that we have set here. Like the 10 meter ham radio band is here, for example, then six meters, and this one here is two meters. And now these are just optional and aren't required, 
but there isn't one for the 33 centimeter ham radio band, which is also the ISM band that MeshTastic uses. So since we'll be testing a MeshTastic device in the next video, let's go ahead and add that band as an example. So for the name, we'll just put in 33 centimeters slash ISM. And the range for that band starts at 902 megahertz, so we'll put 902 in the low box, and it ends at 928 megahertz, so we'll put that into the high box. Now we just need to click on the add button to add it, and we'll have a bar for that range now. So we're done with the settings window and can go ahead and close that out. Now let's go ahead and run the spectrum analyzer and take a look at a radio I'll key up on the two meter ham radio band. I'll do this test on 145.52, and now we have a few options as far as the sweep size goes. If I have a specific frequency that I know I'm after, I'll enter that into the box on the top left here that says center. Then we can shorten up the span a bit for this case, and we'll just do a span of 1 megahertz. Now alternatively, if you don't have a particular frequency in mind and just want to sweep a certain range, you can use the start and stop boxes to enter in the range you want to do a sweep of. To start the sweep, we can hit the play button here, which will do a single sweep, or this fast forward button, which will do a continuous sweep. So let's go ahead and start that for our test here. So now I'll go and key up my radio here, and here we can see the signal showing up on the graph. Then once I stop transmitting, the signal will disappear. Now this is fine for signals with longer transmit times like voice communications, but what about signals that are short bursts like packet radio or mesh-tastic and lower transmissions? Those signals will quickly disappear from the graph, so what we can do in those situations is use this calc drop-down box we have here, and there's an option for min hold and max hold. And if we select max hold, it'll keep that signal on the screen, and show the maximum signal level it received. And this is helpful for those quick burst signals that would otherwise disappear before getting a chance to look at them. There's also another setting we'll want to change as well for those short burst signals, and that's this points per scan option. This is currently set to 1000, and when I key up the radio, it can sometimes take a second or two before it shows up on the graph here. So let's turn off the max hold thing real quick and demonstrate. And I'm starting to transmit now and stopping. And I'll transmit now and stopping now. So as you can see, it takes a few seconds for it to show up depending on where it's currently at on the sweep. This is because it's sweeping through 1,000 points at the moment, and that isn't really necessary for such a small sweep of 1 megahertz, so let's pick something more reasonable like 290 and try again. Now each time we change the points per scan option, we'll need to start to scan again by hitting the fast forward button. And I'm going to start transmitting now and stopping. Transmitting now. And stopping. So as you can see it is much quicker now. So since I'm using my VRN76 I'll send an APRS beacon to test out a short burst transmission to make sure we can pick it up with these settings. I'll go ahead and send that beacon now and here we can see we were able to pick it up. So that covers the basics of the computer application for the TinySA, and if you'd like to pick up a TinySA for yourself, be sure to check out our affiliate links for the TinySA Basic and the TinySA Ultra in the video description below. If you'd like to check out the VGC radio used in this video, I'll put a link to that video in the video description as well. But that'll do it for this video, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss out on any upcoming videos in this Tanya Essay series. Thank you all and have a good one.